Hi guys, my name is Jose Luis Monbel and together with my partner in crime, Dr. Juan Lara, today we're going to see four important tips when talking about connective tissue grafts. Let's go with it. Nowadays, in modern implantology, connective tissue graft plays a great important role. Why? Because our patients, they are not just looking for fixed teeth, they are looking for aesthetic and a long-term result, okay? So, in those terms, connective tissue grafts plays a very important role. We have to know that when we talk about aesthetic, we're not only talking about the white part of the tooth, we are also talking about the pink part, the pink portion. And there is where the connective tissue grafts plays this important role, okay? Because we have to know that every single part that is a little bit uh, depressed, we can see some shadows, and there is where our connective tissue grafts are going to, to give a much better uh, aesthetic outcome and also are going to protect our implants. We have to keep in mind that we need at least three, four millimeters 360 degrees around our fixation in order to protect and to be sure our long-term prognosis of the implants, okay? The first tip we want to share with you today is about how to graft this connective tissue graft. The first way we have is to graft a free gingival graft and then depitalize it outside the mouth, okay? We have to remove the outer layer, okay, in order just to keep the connective tissue graft. We have to get rid of the epithelium, okay? So we graft epithelium and connective tissue from the palate, and then outside the mouth, we remove, we get rid of this epithelial layer, okay? We have to be very careful when removing this epithelial layer. The second way is from the retromolar uh, part of the maxilla, from the tuberosity. We're going to do two parallel incisions, and then we're going to graft the connective tissue from that area. We have to know that that connective tissue is very, very dense. And depending on what we want to do, it will be better for one uh, type of treatment or another kind of treatment. The third, the third way of grafting this connective tissue is just by doing one incision on the palate. From there, we're going to do a split thickness uh, flap and then we're going to graft the, uh, the connective tissue by leaving the epithelium in the palate. This is the way our patient will have the less bleeding and the best post-op. It's also good for them and also good for us. Less complication, less emergencies, less calls at late night. The second tip we want to share with you is when using this one incision technique is to leave the periosteum. How are we gonna do this? We're gonna do one full thickness incision and then once we do this full thickness incision, this only incision, then we're gonna do a split thickness and then another partial incision underneath the connective tissue. That way we're gonna leave on the other side the epithelium, we're gonna grab the connective tissue and leave the periosteum. By leaving the periosteum, as we just said, our uh, patient will have a much better post-op, less bleeding and much better uh, results in that area. And this leads us to our third tip. We're gonna graft a free gingival graft and depitalize it outside of the mouth. We have to be very, very careful when doing this procedure. Why? We have to know that we uh, get rid, we have to know that we eliminate every single part of this epithelial layer. Why? Because if we uh, place our connective tissue graft under the mucosa, through a tunnel, through a, well, uh, any, any techniques we may discuss in other videos, we may introduce, we may place some epithelium underneath the mucosa, and that may lead to some keratin test. That is a little fistula, it may seem like a fistula, but it's not an infectious process, it's only keratin. Okay, so we have to be very careful. We have to get rid of every single part of the epithelium. We know some colleagues, instead of grafting a free gingival graft and depitalizing outside of the mouth, they take a diamond burn and they epitalize the graft before they harvest it. It might be easier in order they, they know that every single part of the epithelium is removed because it, start, it starts bleeding. 
okay? So we remove every single part of the epithelium, either inside the mouth or outside of the mouth, okay? But no epithelial cells should stay in the connective tissue graft. Otherwise, we may have, have some uh, issues. The fourth tip we want to share with you is about the donor side. Okay, we know that we're gonna harvest the, the connective tissue graft from the palate. But where in the palate are we gonna harvest this, con this connective tissue graft? It depends on what we want to do with it. It's not the same to cover a tooth recession than to give some volume in an aesthetic area when talking about implants. So first of all, we have to know what we're going to do. If it's a tooth or an implant, if we want to cover a recession or we want to give volume. For volume, we want to be very stable. We want to give a very, very uh, well uh, good uh, volume to protect our implant and, and improve aesthetics. We will go for the tuberosity, very dense connective tissue. But in the other hand, if we want to cover our recession, when talking about teeth, we need less dense uh, connective tissue in order to be much more revascularly stable in a shorter period of time there we'll go for the connective tissue that is located in the bicuspid area. So this fourth tip is you need to know where to harvest your connective tissue in order to improve your results. If you're talking about implants or you're talking about teeth, it will be completely different. Now, if you want to learn how to do another kind of treatment, free ginger graft, go to this video.